Announced in 2021, Rocket Lab's Neutron is a medium lift launch vehicle capable of delivering 13 tons to orbit prior to returning to a downrange landing site. In terms of pricing and capability, Neutron is a direct competitor to SpaceX's Falcon 9. The only impediment to this competition, however, is Neutron's arrival to market. Earlier this month, during their Q3 earnings, Rocket Lab announced the Neutron's first signed customer. So while remaining confidential, we do know that the contract is for two launches for a Constellation operator, with more launches expected in the future. So we know about Neutron's debut launch, expected mid-2025, and we also know about these two recently signed launches, the first one expected in the second half of 2026, and the other in 2027. But what if I told you that there was also a fourth Neutron mission that was announced? Let's take a look. We still have plans to go to Venus? Absolutely, but as you know, it's a nights and weekends project, so there's not that many nights and weekends <laughs> anymore. Um, we're, we're too busy doing, uh, doing all the stuff, but uh, no, it, it's a, a philanthropic project that we have to, to search for life in Venus, and um, uh, you know, currently I think we're, we're, we're aiming for about a 2026 launch. Um, you know, it'll, it'll be very helpful to have, uh, to have Neutron up and running there. Uh, so to, to you know to be able to loft that up, but um, but yeah, no, it's it's certainly a uh, you know a project that we're very passionate about here. There was a mention in a recent podcast that this Venus mission was being considered to be moved from an electron launching Rocket Lab's Explorer bus to a neutron launching Rocket Lab's Pioneer bus. So Peter's commentary confirms that the neutron will be used for this mission, though it's unclear if the Sat bus is also being changed. To zoom in on the expected launch window, we first need to look into the phenomenon known as the Synodic Period. The Synodic Period is the time it takes for two celestial objects, in this case Earth and Venus, to align in the same relative position in their orbits around the Sun. This period creates a specified window that a launch vehicle will need to take off in in order to reach its destination. The synodic period for Earth and Venus is about 584 days, or roughly 19 months, and in the case of 2026, this window opens up for a roughly two-month window in May through to July. With three neutron launches expected in 2026, we now know of two. Looking ahead to additional launch contracts, let's double-click on a piece of information that was overshadowed during earnings that has some huge implications. Announced alongside earnings was an up to $8 million study contract with the US Air Force to support the development of Neutron's Archimedes engine. This contract is mentioned as having a tie-in with the NSSL program as it supports smooth integration of Neutron into the NSSL program to more efficiently and quickly provide for some of the nation's most critical missions. You might also remember a $24 million contract with the Space Force to develop Neutron's upper stage. This is the same Space Force that manages the NSSL program. So the Space Force recently opened up the request for proposals for this program, which will see Rocket Lab compete to qualify for a share of up to $5.6 billion in national security launches. Now, of course, Rocket Lab aren't the only provider that will be bidding here, but if we're to assume that Rocket Lab will win even 10% of this $5.6 billion, that's $560 million, or roughly 10 to 11 launches, between 2025 and 2029. Also mentioned on Rocket Lab's Q3 is that they've recently received confirmation from the U.S. Space Force's Space Systems Command that Neutron can also compete for missions under OSP-4, which is another billion-dollar pool that Rocket Lab could also pull from. So assuming Rocket Lab sees 10% of this is another two launches, bringing us to 12 so far under just these two programs. So Rocket Lab has been reiterating one launch in 2025, three in 2026, and five in 2027. And as far as what 2028 and onward look like, you can see by just 10% of these two programs alone, the demand for Neutron is not going to be an issue. So if we were to start assuming 20 to 25% for these programs, the numbers start to get out of hand. 
And this goes without mentioning the multitude of commercial Constellation customers that Rocket Lab is also expected to be requested for. So think Amazon, Global Star, AST, etc. So if there's one thing that was solidified on this call, is that the Rocket Lab team is not losing sleep over neutron demand. So outside of the earnings call, there have been a number of interviews, conferences, webinars, you name it. So there's still plenty to digest, so we'll put a pin in things for the time being. Worth mentioning is that on one of these upcoming interviews will be yours truly. So if you have any questions for Adam or for Peter, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Also, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And also be sure to check out the Patreon to view and download the valuation models that I reference to make these videos for you. The Rocket Lab model includes price targets that go all the way out to 2030 and includes a number of updates that have been made throughout the quarter, including all things quantitative from the earnings calls, conferences, etc. Thank you guys for the hangout. Um, wish me luck for the interview. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have an awesome day.